to explain or let them see for themselves. All right, and fans, we promised you you'd see the conclusion in more of this match. And here it is, action in the ring right now. And that's Roddy Piper really taking it to the champ, Wahoo. That's right. You know, Roddy Piper is an excellent athlete, and uh, he's given Flair all he can take. And uh, at the time, I was in the dressing room, and uh, I think he had Valentine sitting down ringside watching. And uh, he was giving Flair all he could handle. And I think you see right here, he pulls Piper out of the but, but Piper out smarts him right there. Slams him to the pose, that's right. Pose. He goes down, and uh, I think Flair had just a little more on his hands, and he thought he did, and uh, Piper's got a pretty good upper hand of the match here, and if there's anybody in the United States right now, uh, he's one of the top guys that right. capable of taking the world's belt away from Flair, and Flair knows this. And, it looks uh, like the champ's almost out right here, and he slams him into the post again. That's right, and you know Piper, he's getting back in the ring. And uh, as, you, as you can see right here, he's got everything pretty well in hand. He's got Flair hurt. Flair knows he's fighting for his life. He, know, he knows the NWA belt is at stake. He's, Piper's throwing him back in the ring. Can't pin a man out on the floor. He knows that. He's yeah. getting him back in the ring. He must have felt right here, Wahoo, that he had uh, the champion in a position where he could pin him because he threw, like you say, threw him right back in the ring. Well, right Look here. at him now with that right hand. Well, you know, during the match before, Fred did the same thing to him. He's given a little dose of his own medicine. And when I don't, you're, you know, sometimes when that dose of medicine comes home, it's not as fun as when, you, when you're taking it as when you're giving it. Well, players, look at him just wild as swinging that Piper. That's They're missing those wild swings. That's right. That Piper's right on top of the situation. Uh, he's giving Fair all he can stand. Over the ropes. Well, actually, he hit him, and uh, he didn't push him over. The man, he hit him, and he went over. It was an so, uppercut right an in uppercut, the chin, and right. over he went. As you see, I'm standing right there, and he, that's yeah, the Flair shoves you, shoves right? Shoves me. I'm, I don't want to get involved because I don't want to get Piper, in, uh, uh, you know, the right there, uh, Valentine slipped up behind him, and hit hit uh, Piper. Piper, and here I'm fighting him. Flair comes in, he wants a little of it. Well, he can get it. I guarantee you one thing. You know, I'd like to be you the world. Both right here now. Well, I'd like to be the world's champion. I'd like, yeah, but you know, being U.S. champion and having a guy like Valentine around all the time, trying to break your leg and. Uh, Wait a minute, he's got a there. chair now, if you want. It. Right there, you can see he's got a pretty good lick on me, and uh, you know, and. I was in there trying to help Piper. They're trying to hurt Piper, and uh, evidently Flair knew that his hands were going to be full, or he'd have never had Valentine there because Valentine slipped up behind him right there. You see, they're trying to put me out of commission because of, I have I have a match signed that day too to wrestle uh, Valentine for the U.S. Heavyweight Heavyweight Championship, and he knows this, and he's trying to take it out of me because he wants to win the belt. Well, that's a wild finish to that match was. Well, I want to tell you something. Flair, Valentine, we've got a lot of matches coming up. That's a lot of matches signed, and I can't think of a better man than I'd rather have as my partner than Roddy Piper, and I've got a lot of matches signed, and he's going to be my partner. And Valentine, i got matches with you signed. Flair, I've got matches with you. I've got some tag matches signed. So anytime we come to an area, I'll either have Piper with me or I'll be there, and I guarantee you, it's revenge time. <laughs> All right, fans. Chief Wahoo McDaniel, U.S. Heavyweight Champ. We've got action in the ring right now. Here is Jerry Briscoe and Bill White. Yes, sir. Jerry Briscoe, younger brother now of our Mid Atlantic Champ, Jack Briscoe. And what a combination these Briscoe brothers make. Always action and excitement when you've got the Briscoes around. Outstanding young amateur wrestlers. Tremendous professional careers already, even as young as they are. And still a tremendous, tremendous career ahead of these two. Jerry Briscoe now, Bill White. White, big, rough, tough one. He's going to work you over if he gets an opportunity. He has got the headlock. And quickly now, Briscoe right out with a wrist. Mentioning Jack Briscoe, Jerry's brother, as he's got White in the air, drops him back on the back of that neck and those shoulders with that suplex, and White's going to make the ropes. Jack Briscoe, our Mid-Atlantic champ, against our former champion, Paul Jones. That match will follow this one. Well, I tell you, Wahoo McDaniel, Roddy Piper, a number of people really upset now at the champ, Ric Flair, and Flair, who got some help there from Greg Valentine, 
I hope you saw that in that film as Valentine came up and hit Roddy Piper right from behind, knocking Piper out of the ring. And of course, Valentine still trying to not settle a score, but really trying to hurt and to injure. Down goes White, trying to injure if he can, Wahoo McDaniel again. Well, the champion, the world champion, has really got his work cut out for him also. Not only has he got to contend now with a U.S. champ, Wahoo McDaniel, he's got to contend with our Mid-Atlantic champ, Jack Briscoe. He's got to contend with Jerry Briscoe, whom you see in the ring right now, plus the American Dream, Dusty Rhodes, Dory Funk, many, many more, and Ric Flair, is going to have to always be on his toes, particularly when he's on Mid-Atlantic Wrestling. Uh, Jerry backing away as White gets to his feet, and White trying to get for him. Legal blow, referee Tommy Young watching as they slug it out now. And these are fists flying. Fireman's takedown quickly puts White's shoulders back down on the mat, and here's Jerry Briscoe hooking the leg now, trying for a pin. Trying to get that leverage to see if he can hold that shoulder down. A count of two and now a count of one and White very quickly gets the shoulder up. seen and we have heard a lot in recent weeks from Sir Oliver Humperdinck, but have you ever seen him any matter than he was? And of course, when he calls Jimmy Valiant a backstabber, it was Joe LaDuke who came charging into the ring and got Jimmy Valiant from behind. And that's really what caused Humperdinck to lose his coat as Valiant ripped and tore it right off of him. And Jimmy Valiant is ever, ever ready for Joe LaDuke, Sir Oliver Humperdinck, anybody out of the house of Humperdinck. But Humperdinck, who lost his coat in that fracas, is gonna lose more than that if he's not careful whenever Jimmy Valiant's around. The boogeyman is irate and ready to go. Here's White now, who has the leverage, the upper hand. Off of the rope. And in the air goes White quickly now. With the press comes Briscoe, but he can only hold him for the count of two again. White again, twisting and turning, is gonna make the ropes and gets a foot through. Briscoe had started in, White came up with a knee and caught him moving in, and that one hurts. He was coming in after him, and he really caught that knee hard to the midsection. The foot now, right down across the chin and the jaw. Over comes White. One, two, oh, very, very close. The count of two on Jerry Briscoe from Bill White. Briscoe with those left hands now on his feet, slugging away at White, staggers him. Suplex. He almost had it locked in. White reaches up and grabs that foot, trying to keep him from locking in the leg lock. But Jerry Briscoe has got it now, and White still holding on to that ankle now, trying to fight his way out. He's not going to be able to make it. Jerry Briscoe got the pressure to it. Once he had it locked in, White fought it, trying to hold that other leg up in that foot. Just didn't have the strength to hang on. Watch in slow motion as you go back and see the beginning of the end here as Briscoe comes around, gets that leg, locks that leg lock in, and even though White fought it all he could, no way with our winner, Jerry Briscoe. Fans, right now, here is an outstanding young wrestler and athlete that has really made a name for himself in recent weeks, Mike Rotundo. And Mike, I tell you, we're hearing a lot about Mike Rotundo around the Mid-Atlantic Wrestling. Thank you very much, Bob. It's a real pleasure to be here to talk to all the people and just to have a chance to talk with you. Um, recently, I had a, I've had been wearing this neck brace, a protective neck brace, uh, from an injury I received from uh, Leroy Brown and Humperdinck. And I've, I've had a chance to let my neck heal up and I'm just looking forward to getting my chance at Leroy Brown in the ring and just uh, come to towns and have matches with Leroy Brown and show the people 
that I can beat Leroy Brown and that he's not going to get away with what he did to me. Boy, the, the Humberdink and that house of Humberdink, uh, they, they are really, have really caused some problem and some mayhem, really. Uh, Jimmy Valiant, who is really after him, almost got Humperdinck a little mm -hmm. earlier in our program. Yeah, it was great to see that. It was great to see uh, Humperdinck's always coming in, sticking his big nose in there, his little red hair. And he's just like a little stooge, always has to be around the scene and, and causing trouble and le instead of letting the matches go on as they would. Well, he'll, he's gotten a, a few chances. I had a chance to give him an airplane spin. Unfortunately, I didn't get to drop him on yeah. his head because Leroy came in. But it's, it's sooner or later, he's going to get his day and he have his own trouble himself. Not only uh, not only Leroy Brown now, but you gotta you gotta worry about Greg Valentine. This Joe LaDuke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there, uh, there's a sure. there's a big rugged rough individual, this Canadian lumberjack, mm -hmm. this Joe LaDuke. Uh, you got Paul Jones, Jones in there Valentine, and Valentine. Gene Anderson. Hey, the list goes on. on, and on. It's just uh, you know, these guys are are looking at it the wrong way. They're in it for the money, which which every professional wrestler is, but I think you can make a name for yourself. And, and not have to break the rules, which Humperdinck and the House of Humperdinck is consistently doing. You just take advantage, take advantage, and then someone gets hurt in the end. Well, they're going to get theirs, and the House of Humperdinck is going to go down. And like Jack Briscoe, myself, Wahoo McDaniels, Ron Ritchie, everybody, Steamboat, Youngblood, and we're working on it, and they're going to beat. Uh, we're just going to come out and do it, you know. I know the fans are pleased that your neck is coming along so well there, Mike, and uh, good luck to you when you get that Leroy Brown. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it, and I thank you, Bob. Paul Jones is scheduled to be up there wrestling Jack Briscoe right now. Well, let me tell you something right now, Bob. The reason I'm right here at the desk is because we're looking at a thief right now, Briscoe standing right up there. And the only reason Humper Dick and I came here right now is to get even with a thief. And I want the thief to make it worthwhile. I want him to put up that belt and not be a closet champion like he was when he had it the last time. That's the only reason I took it off of him because he was a closet champion. He'd run and hide. And I'm not talking behind your back, Briscoe. I'm talking to you man to man, face to face. It's not a, You're champion, nothing. It's not a championship match, boy. I it's know up. it's That's not. Why. I know it's not a J. I could have told you that. The people could have told you that because the guys are scared. He's a coward. Come on down here if you got any guts. Come on down here where people can see you. Everybody out there wants to look at a thief. Come on down here where they can see you, Briscoe. Come on down here. All right, he says he's willing to put the belt on the line. Wait a minute now, wait a minute. He is? Yeah. Then right, he's going to put the belt let's on the line. Let's get it back. Let's Look, let's does he know what happened last time? Does he realize what happened last time he wrestled me on TV for the belt? Let's go take it to All right, you you're not it. only a thief, you're a dumb idiot. Come on. You're an idiot. <laughs> he's an idiot. like taking candy from a oh. baby. <laughs> oh, right. All right, fans, a championship match. It was a non-championship match. The Mid-Atlantic belt is at stake. And Paul Jones baited Jack Briscoe into that, along with the help of Humperdinck, of course.